Today we're going to be talking about the Elsys 4G Amplimax system. Now it comes in a box that looks like this and I want to give a big shout out to Haven Technologies for sending this over for us to review. Now the consumer base that I think is going to be the most interested in this are people who either A do a lot of traveling and they want a good stable internet connection whether it be in their RV or their camping or something like that or people who live in a rural area and they just don't have access to a standard internet connection. Now you could say that there is a use case for people who live in suburbs and just don't have a very good signal and they want to try and boost that signal while saving costs on something like T-Mobile 5G home internet and that may or may not work for you just depending on how many obstructions you have between you and the actual tower that you're trying to point this to. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to walk through an actual unboxing of this. I'm going to show you what I had to go through to actually set this up. And I'm going to try and keep it very minimal because Richard over at Haven Technologies has done a phenomenal job of walking through all of that information and answering all kinds of frequently asked questions. And he has all of that on his website already. So there's no need to really cover all of that stuff here. I will link all of that down in the description for you guys. So if you do have any questions or you need to check something out or you you just can't figure something out, uh, we will have all of that linked down for you so you can go straight to that website. One thing that I do want to do and I want to make sure that we cover kind of accurately is I want to compare how well this works at my home because I live really close to the actual tower and, and then I'm going to go and I want to go out in the country and I'm going to reset this up and I'm going to run everything out in the middle of nowhere so that we're like eight to ten miles away from the exact same cell phone tower. So I can see the tower from my backyard because I'm like maybe just shy of a mile away from the actual tower itself. So I'll be really interested to see how well it performs when I have like 90 to 100% signal strength as opposed to when we're really far away and the signal strength is not as good. So that'll be the true test. But without further ado, let's hop into the unboxing and see what you get with the Amplimax system. Here's the front of the box for the Elsys Amplimax system. If we flip this over really quick, you can take a look at some of the specifications and things that come in the box here. Feel free to pause this if you'd like to take a better look. Now, opening this up, the first thing you're going to be greeted with is how well they packaged all of this stuff in such a small box. Now, the actual modem itself isn't very big, but it is awesome how they were able to get all of this stuff into a small box. So the first thing here is the actual modem itself and I'll show you in a little bit just how big that is. Next, we have our quick start guide and some of our paperwork that comes with the device itself. From there, you're gonna get a 1.5 meter or roughly four and a half to five foot ethernet cable. And then moving on from that, we get a 24 volt DC power adapter. This power adapter does have a barrel plug for the end, and that's gonna be used for the included PoE injector that we'll get to here in a minute. Now here we have roughly 50 feet of RJ45 ethernet cable. This is weatherproof, and this is what you're gonna to use to run from the actual modem itself into your home or wherever you're gonna have your network set up. This device right here is the actual PoE injector that I was talking about, and so to get a closer look, we have our DC in, we have the power over ethernet port, and then our LAN port, which you connect to your device, and I will show you how to hook that up here in just a second. Next, you get a little bag, and it has some nylon cable ties or zip ties as well as some 3M adhesive tape that you can use for the installation of this device. Now last but not least you also get a metal reflector and this is what's going to actually help boost your signal for the Amplimax system and then there's nothing else in the box other than that. Taking a closer look at the Amplimax device itself if we take this bottom cover off, it will show us all of the ports and where we put our SIM card. And if we go from left to right, on the very left-hand side, we have a spot to hook up an external antenna. Right next to that, you have a button that will allow you to switch between the internal antenna or an external one. Next to that, we have our SIM card slot. And then next to that, we have some status indication LEDs. And then we have our RJ45 slash power over ethernet port. Just to the right of that is an easy install button. And when you press this, it's gonna do some beeping. And then it's gonna do basically like a blind search. It's gonna scan for available carriers followed by signal strength, and then it's gonna display all of that to the right on that LED panel. Coming back to the size of the unit, I have my Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra. 
sitting on top of the Elsys Amplimax system. And as you can see, it's not very big at all. And so they've done a really good job of making this modem antenna combo unit really compact. And so it's easy to take with you. And the overall footprint of this thing just doesn't require a whole lot of space, which is awesome. But enough about all of that. So I ordered a Starlink pole that I'm going to mount this on for the testing. And so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get that put together. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. And then we're going to start running some tests. Now, one thing to note is for anybody that's trying to set this up, please do all of your testing and setting up and making sure it works before you mount it on a pole, mount it on the side of your house, because the last thing you want to do is climb up on your roof to take this down because you need to change something. So I have the antenna set up right here and I'm going to go ahead and we're using everything that came in the kit. So I'm going to use the ethernet cord that came with it. We're going to run it down through that window well there and I'm going to have it hooked up to my network because that's where all my computers and everything is in my home. And then we're going to get some tests and I'm going to show you how well it works within a suburb community if you're close to a tower. And then we're going to go out and I'm going to show you what it would be like and how it performs if you go like camping or you want to take this with you in an RV or you're going to use it somewhere where you're not necessarily close to a tower and there's a lot of obstructions. So you can see for me here, I'll show you guys that my tower is actually right here and it's really not that far away from my house. So we should get pretty good results. Okay, so we have all the wiring ran. Now we're gonna go in the house. I'm gonna show you how to hook up the power over ethernet injector, and then we'll get everything connected to my computer. We will then configure the modem slash antenna, and I'll show you how to set that up. I'm using T-Mobile home internet specifically, so there's some things we need to do to make this work with that service. And then once we get done with that, we'll see what the capabilities of this unit actually is. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I've ran all of the ethernet cable from the actual antenna to the inside of my house. Now I did that using Waveform's window entry ethernet cable. I'll put a link down in the description for that product if you wanna check it out. But now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna hook up the PoE device that came with the kit. And we're gonna get this set up on my computer and I'm gonna show you how to do all of that. Okay, so we have everything hooked up and you can see the power light there is on. We got our power. This is going to the actual antenna itself and then this is going to my actual computer. Hopping on my computer, I'm gonna open a web browser and I'm gonna to go to 192.168.10. .254 to get to the setup screen for this device. Now you will see some translation stuff here at the top. Just close that out if you get that in your browser. Now you'll see here at the very top where it lists the SIM and your signal level and your operator and stuff like that. I don't have any signal. And the reason for that is because we need to actually change the IMEI number on the device. But before we do that, we need to verify the firmware version of our device. And you'll see here that I have 1.7.1.3.5. Now, this is an issue because if we look at Haven Technologies' website, if we were to try to change the IMEI number on this firmware, we would brick our device. So we actually need to update to 1.7.1.3.6, and we can do that by downloading it from their webpage. So I'll put links down in the description below. When you get to the website, you're just going to click this button. It's going to download the firmware. You're going to need to unzip the firmware before you can upload it to the device. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do all of that now and then we will be back after I've updated to the latest version. And thanks to the power of editing, we are back. We are fully updated to the latest version, and now we can proceed to change that IMEI number. You're gonna do that by copying and pasting the website off of Haven Technologies' website in their help section. We're gonna go there, it looks like this. You're gonna paste some commands. They have all of that on their website, so I'm not gonna go through it. I will put all that down in the description for you guys. And once you do that, just make sure that you reboot your device. You'll see that we were successful in changing our IMEI number and now we show T-Mobile as our operator with a signal strength or signal level of 99%. So now we can go ahead and do some of the fun stuff, which is the actual testing. The first thing I want to do is just run through some websites and see how well this actually responds to loading things. So the first thing I did was I went to slickdeals.net uh, and that loaded no problem at all. I'm going to go ahead and make this just a little bit bigger for you guys. And now I'm going to try and go to ESPN.com and let's see if that responds well. 
And as you can see, there's really not a lot of lag. It loads pretty good. If I go ahead and I click on something here on the web page, it loads no problem. If we go ahead and we do an actual speed test on this, you'll see that uh, it, we're probably not going to get the speeds that people think they're going to get in terms of today's internet standards. But you got to keep in mind that one, most people are probably overpaying for internet that they don't actually utilize. And two, the speeds that I'm getting in this speed test are not indicative of the speeds that you would actually get because it's going to be solely based on the bands that your tower offers in your area and also how far away from the tower you are to include any kind of obstructions that you may or may not have. And so while you'll see that I got 61.32 megabits per second down and it looks like we're hovering somewhere here in the 13 or 14s on our upload, that doesn't seem like it is tremendous, but I'm gonna show you that it's enough for the average person. So what I wanna do now is go to my YouTube page and I wanna see if we can play a video. And I'm gonna actually try and change the resolution and we're gonna make sure that we've bumped it up to 1080p. And then I wanna walk through and just try and click through different pieces of the video here. So as you can see, it loaded and it's playing fine. I did mute the clip for the purposes of this video but we're gonna go ahead and change the quality now and we're gonna make sure it's on 1080p and it didn't seem to affect it at all. And as you can see, I can click through this without any issues at all and it just keeps on trucking right along. Okay, so we finally made it out to the country. I have the antennas set up, I have all the wiring ran, I have everything in my truck and then I'm gonna show you what this would be like if you were to use this in a rural area or if you wanted to take this camping or something like that. So as you can see here, I have the PoE adapter hooked up here. This is going into the antenna. This is going into my computer right here. So I have this plugged into my MacBook. This is a gigabit ethernet port. And then I'm getting all of the power from a power inverter that I have connected to my truck over here. So here we go, let's see how well this works. So first things first, let's try and run a speed test. Wow, that's actually a lot better than I thought it was going to do. We're actually quite a ways away from the tower. And so this is real time. And just to show you that that might not look like very high numbers, but it's actually more than good enough to stream video. So if we go to videos, Visigig 5G modem is literally just that. It's just a modem, and that is what's so awesome. And let's even see what we got here for quality. We'll crank it up to 1080p. About this, it doesn't have any kind of routing capabilities. Nothing else built into it. You can connect it to a single computer directly via an RJ45. This thing really impressed me. So we're really far away from the actual tower and there's an entire forest between where we are and the tower itself. And so I'll put up the actual distance between where I'm at and the actual tower after I get home, I'll look that up and measure the distance between the two. But we are like at least eight to 10 miles away from the tower with many obstructions. And it's really interesting that we got the speeds that we got, things loaded quickly, there was no lag. And so overall, I think this is a really good package, especially for those that want to take this camping or live in the middle of nowhere and just want to get a little bit better speeds, this is a very inexpensive solution. So as I was editing the video, it occurred to me that we didn't do any kind of testing in terms of gaming. So what I've done is I've hooked this back up. I have this going out to the Amplimax 4G 
system here and then I have this wire here going straight into the back of my Xbox Series X and we're going to see if we can do some gaming on this. For this test I chose to do Call of Duty Black Ops 6 on the Xbox Series X and I really want to do this all real time so nothing is sped up. You will be able to see the latency at the top here as it's searching for a match, how long it takes for the game to actually find other players and then load into the game as well as a couple of minutes worth of real-time gameplay and so i think that's really going to put this to the test if it does really well with this then it should do well in theory with any other type of game that you want to play online Team Deathmatch. You know what Langley expects. Get it done. Now that we've gotten a little bit of gameplay under our belt, I don't think this is bad at all. There might be like the slightest case of lag here and there, but it's definitely not constant and this is 100% playable. This is going to conclude all the testing that I've done on this device. I really hope this video helped you decide whether or not this would be a product that would benefit you. Now if you'd like to check it out or even purchase one, I've put a link down in the description for you guys so that you can go ahead and check that out. Now if you have any questions about the product, feel free to hit me up down in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. But that's about all I have for this one, so don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel to be notified of future video uploads as soon as I post them. But without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you.